Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, June 21st, 2016. I'm speaking with Dr. Nurun Nobi. This interview is being conducted in New York City. Uh, Dr. Nobi, where, where is your desh? Uh, I was born in Kamarpara, a remote village mm -hmm. in district Tangal. Tangal? In 1949. For, in in, 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 in uh, East, East Pakistan or East Bengal? The, uh, the, the East Pakistan. East Pakistan and then which is part of Bangladesh now. Yes. Um, so how far is it from a big city, bigger city? Uh, the district town is Tangail, Tangail, which is about 30 miles south of my village. How would you how would you used to go there? Uh, there was uh, a bus service mm -hmm. but it was not so regular. Okay. So most of the time our people used to go to Shiraz Gons, which is west across the Jomuna River. Okay. And also there was good bus service to Maimanshin. Okay. Which was the district town. District town, which is a little yeah, bit Though more. our subdivision town is Tangail, but we had more connection with Maimanshing. With Maimanshing as well as Shiraz Gons okay. in Pabna so, because it's only half an just, hour by boat. Just across the river. Ac across, across the, the Jamuna River. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, how was the village like? Um, village life was very wonderful. I was, when I was born, then the atmosphere and the economic condition in the village and around uh, locality was very nice. You know, people were affluent, there was no famine. How, 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 lar how large, how approximately, how many people? Uh, our village was very small, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, uh, it's a kind of unit with few other um, uh, villages, okay. and which was centered uh, by a Jamindar house. Okay. Uh, Maiman Singh, Hemant Chandra was the Jaminda. Okay. There was a school, so that was the anchor place. Okay. So there was a school there in the village? Yes. Was it a mixed Hindu-Muslim village? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, our, uh, the, when we were growing up, mm -hmm. we, it was a kind of secular society. Mm -hmm. We used to have uh, Eid celebration, mm -hmm. Hindu people used to join us, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of puja mm -hmm. celebration. Mm -hmm. We used to go there, okay. and about uh, Ten families were Hindus in my village, mm -hmm. and about eighty or ninety were Muslims. Okay, but we have very cordial relation. There right. was no communal okay uh, conflict. Very nice. So, so used to. How did you used to go to school? Did you go to school there? Yes, yes. Uh, in fact, I I used to walk on my feet. I had no shoes. Okay, because it was uh, in rainy season. Mm -hmm. There were canals, there were uh, rain, mm -hmm. so one cannot use Pardon? shoes. Yeah. So we have to go barefoot so, to school. How far was the school? It's about uh, less than a mile. So you used to walk, I'm course. talking about elementary school, uh, what, what primary name? school. Do you remember the name? Yes, yes, yes. It's Shanok Baira Primary School. Okay. And what did you go to? And, and then uh, after graduating from elementary school, I went to high school, Okay. Hamnagar. It was a in the Jamidar uh, house, uh, Jamidar compound, okay, and um, is a big building. Mm -hmm. and in those uh, days, we, we were little. We thought this is the biggest building. Okay, of course. <laughs> but <laughs> but now it's very small. But that time, sure, uh, sure it was sure. main attraction for us. So how you used to walk to high school too? You yes, yes. We used to walk high school in 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 a dry season. We used to go over, wear a sandal, okay. sponge sandal. Yeah. But in rainy season, we used to go barefoot what did because we have to cross canal. What did your parents do? My um, my father was a landlord. Okay. And uh, he... Jamindar? Uh, it's not Jamindar, he owned... Talukdar. Uh, yeah, Talukdar. He, he, he owned... Uh, Property. Uh, land properties land. and that's what there were people who worked for. And, what, and, and he, your mother, housewife? She was a completely okay. housewife. So how many brothers and sisters? We are only two brothers. My older brother, uh, he was... Eight nine years older than me, okay. and I was the okay. young, yeah. younger. So, what was the name of your parents? Uh, Afazuddin okay. and uh, Anwara Begum. Begum okay. Yeah. So now, as you're growing up, um, you already mentioned it was a very cordial relationship. So, so as you're growing up, then then you see the right. What do you see rise of Bangladesh? Uh, when I was growing up uh, in our area, we used. 
we, as I said, we had very good time, mm -hmm. but as time passing by, uh, we see the economic condition in the area deteriorated. Mm -hmm. And there, suppose that, uh, there was a breeze, it broke it down, broken up, it was never built. Okay. We have a um, public dispensary, mm -hmm. uh, the health officer left, there was no replacement. Okay. And that, uh, that uh, dispensary compound, there was a um, grow, um, growth of grasses and weeds, you know, the cattle used to. Yes. So overall condition was going down. Going down. Then General Ayub Khan took over the power. Mm. When okay. he came uh, to power, then situation or economics condition further deteriorated. Okay. Because there was no development. Okay. And as a young man, that struck me. Mm -hmm. Why there is a discrimination? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, there was a leader. A uh, leftist leader, Hatem Ali Khan, mm -hmm. uh, peasant leader, mm -hmm. he used to fight for that. He was arrested, he was imprisoned. So that uh, provoked me to think about why this is going on because okay. we used to hold him in high esteem. He's mm -hmm. fighting uh, for the uh, poor people, rights okay. of the uh, for, for farmers. Mm -hmm. So when I went to College, going to college, Mai Man Singh. Mai Man Singh. Okay. And Ananda Mohan College. Okay. Very then, famous college. Very uh, yes, it was, it was one of the oldest, oldest uh, college yeah. in the district. Yeah. Then mm, I came to know about Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. The leader he, of Bangladesh. Leader of the Bangladesh. Of Bangladesh. He was Bangladesh. fighting for the autonomy and uh, fighting against the discrimination. And in 1965, there was the India Pakistan war. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the college students who work as a a volunteer at night we used to um, uh, did vigilant whether is there any enemy mm -hmm. or spy but after the war they, we realized that East Pakistan was unprotected mm -hmm. it was at the mercy of India mm -hmm. Pakistan central government did not care about that at all then in 1966 when I was in second year student in college then Sheikh Mujibur came to uh, my man Sheikh, okay. and he had he held a uh, public meeting, mm -hmm. and he explained. By that time, he put forward six point mm -hmm. charters okay. for the autonomy of East Bengal, mm -hmm. autonomy of Bangladesh, economic, mm -hmm. political, mm -hmm. and he uh, vehemently opposed the military rule of General Ayub Khan, Khan, and also economic uh, disparity. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that this disparity was widening day by day. Okay. So I became a uh, follower of Sheikh okay. Mujibur Rahman. And then, I became a active of student league, okay. his, his okay. student front, uh, Aumai League's student okay. front. Okay. So that's how I became aware, aware of the plight of the Bengali people. Yeah, yeah. That we are being ruled as a second class citizen by Pakistan. So now comes. What did you know? Was did there was a there was a sixty five. There was a there was a war, and then in 64, 60, 66. four also there was a big big rioting throughout the nation called Hazrat Bal. Did life affect? It, it, as I said, in our area was it didn't, it didn't. not at all okay. because Hindu and Muslims they were living, uh, living okay. side by side like a family okay. member. You know, so, uh, we used to go to their uh, puja celebration, they used to yeah, come to yeah. our... Uh, so then, then comes close to 71. What's happening? And then uh, then I, in 1967 I went to uh, Dhaka University. At that time, Sheikh Mujib's six-point program was uh, uh, getting um, strength, momentum yeah. okay. in, in, in East Bengal, in Bangladesh. He was arrested from one place to another mm -hmm. when he was and visiting district after district to talk about six point program. Uh, with the student, we became more aware what mm -hmm. is going on and we became a diehard supporter of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman mm -hmm. and his six point. Then in 1967, the, the government framed a uh, conspiracy case, Agartala, Agartala conspiracy. conspiracy case against Sheikh Mujibur And he arrested was, him. And arrested him, he was uh, put in prison. And then there was a movement uh, uh, for the support of uh, Six Point Charter. Uh, six um, uh, six um, laborer, uh, agitator, they were killed. Hmm. Uh, and that also 
inspired us and that to fight for this uh, six point program and then by the time among the student uh, community then ag again we, are, uh, we have uh, student league which is a follower of army league we consider ourselves as a nationalist mm -hmm. and there is a student union leftist mm -hmm. and in both in these both parties both Hindu, Muslim, and a Christian, everybody was there. Yeah, Though Hindu, yeah. num Hindu students' number were small, Smaller, yeah. but we did not feel at all any discrimination or, or communal uh, feelings. Mm -hmm. We thought we are comrades, mm -hmm. we are fighting for a cause. Mm -hmm. Maybe outside there was some friction, but I did not, not know. Yeah. Yeah. I never felt but that. But then comes 71, so what was the situation? And then, uh, as I was uh, talking about the six-point program, and you know, you know the Bangladesh uh, history of Bangladesh liberation movement. Mm -hmm. Be before 1971 liberation war, there was a, a period we call liberation movement. Okay. It started in 1951 uh, for the language movement. Yes. And as you know that in 1952, uh, Bengali students they were uh, making a procession demanding that Bengali should be the state Pakistan, language yeah. of Pakistan. Pakistan. Pakistan did not angry, rather they, uh, uh, the, these students, few of them were killed. So that, that we call that seeds of nationalism uh, were, were sown mm -hmm. on that day. Yeah. So from then came 1962 uh, Education Commission report. Mm -hmm. and that also against uh, um, Ayub Khan's military rule. And then Bangabandhu Six Point Program. And when he was arrested, uh, 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 for in uh, Agartala, Agartala conspiracy case, then uh, with the student group, we formed a um, coalition with all the students, and uh, we had charter eleven point charter demand. Mm -hmm. in, that included Sheikh Mujib six point charter, mm -hmm. and we are fighting for this eleven point program, release of Sheikh Mujib Rahman, and uh, withdrawal of the Agartala case. We were successful. It is a long story. Ayub Khan had to resign. They, he, he had to release uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, declared 21st February as a uh, um, 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 language um, Martyr's, Martyr's, Day. Martyr's Day. So it was a big achievement mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And then Ayub Khan handed over power to a general, Yahya Khan, and he had to give the general election. He promised that there will be general election, whoever party wins, they will rule Pakistan. And then Sheikh Mujib started uh, this uh, campaign for the election with six point charter at his, uh, at his um, manifesto. Mm -hmm. And uh, though Pakistani military intelligence has a, uh, information that no party will win, and uh, each party will have uh, fractions and they will they a coalition. A, a coalition and then a military will control and they will rule as I can did. But uh, unfortunately for them, fortunately for us, Sheikh Mujib's Aomi League owned almost 99% seats mm -hmm. in, in the Pakistan National Assembly, as a, uh, in Pakistan National Assembly, absolute majority, yeah, yeah. and East Pakistan 99%. Yeah, yeah. So that gave mandate to Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, by that time we call him Bongo Bondu. Father, 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 friend of Bengal, Bengal. Yeah. friend of Bengal. So then Bangabandhu said, I own the mandate to frame a constitution of Pakistan on the basis of six-point charter. Mm -hmm. Ayub Khan came, he started negotiation, but eventually Julfi Karali Bhuttu, uh, his party, People's Party, became the runners of second yeah. in the parliament. Yahya Khan and Bhuttu, they conspired not to hand over power to Sheikh Mujibur yeah. Rahman. Mm -hmm. So they, in the disguise of negotiation, they are bringing arms and ammunition and soldiers from West Pakistan. And Sheikh Mujib was adamant that the, the Pakistani frame constitution should be framed on the basis of six-point charter. Uh, mm -hmm. six point charter. And if you analyze six-point charter, it's really one point. That based on those six-point charter, a unified national and government cannot exist because mm -hmm. Six Point Charter has the demand that uh, East Pakistan or Bengal, Bangladesh will have the right to have the start their own currency. They will have to their own foreign policy. Mm -hmm. Only defense will be at the hand of the central government, but again, East Pakistani government 
can have the right to raise uh, militia. Mm -hmm. So uh, Pakistani knew that if six point is implemented, there will be independent. There will be no united Pakistan. Bangladesh knew that if there is a six point program, Bangladesh will be independent, mm -hmm. liberated. So that's why both parties, Sheikh Mujib and Yahya Bhutti, they they were uh, very uh, strict to their negotiation okay. point. But they had a plan that they will attack All right. so let's Pakistan and they will control East Bengali people with yeah. military forces. So what happened then? Your then role. then and I, I, I was the activist of this uh, non-cooperation mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. uh, there was supposed to be a uh, national assembly at Dhaka on March 3rd. Mm -hmm. And Bhutu and Yaya, especially Bhutu, declared that he is going to postpone this session. In parliamentary system, president cannot call or postpone a national assembly meeting without consultation or advice and from the leader of the Bhutu was house. was a mi minor person yeah, anyway. Uh, uh, leader of the house, Sheikh Mujib found it, it as a conspiracy and he thought this, is a, uh, this should not go unchallenged. So he called for non-cooperation movement. Mm -hmm. So East Bengal, Bangladesh, run under his uh, command from March 3rd to 25th March. Okay. All the office were closed whenever Sheikh Mujib called and then they did not pay any tax. Bank were open or closed by his instruction. In other words, Bangladesh was run by Sheikh Mujibur Rahman as if he is the head of the state. Head of the state. Head of the government. Then on 25th March, as I said, Pakistan brought arms and ammunition. Mm -hmm. So their plan was they will attack. Mm -hmm. arrest Sheikh Mujib, mm -hmm. kill all the army leaders, student leaders, and other, uh, common people, and they will intimidate the entire Pakistan, East Pakistan people, Bengali people, that we have to surrender to them. So that's how, that's why they attacked on uh, 25th March at uh, Dhaka city. Uh, we knew that on that night, the execution has failed, Yaya Khan on the way of the airport, so we are instructed that we have to make a barricade near the Shahbag Hotel so that uh, this um, Diden Shahbag Hotel mm -hmm. so that uh, Pakistani army cannot penetrate inside the university okay. campus. So about uh, about 100 student activists, we are making barricade on Elephant Road in mm -hmm. front of, uh, now it's uh, Shahbag Hotel, now mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, postgraduate uh, medical college. Then, we found that a convoy of Pakistani military was proceeding towards us. So uh, they stopped, they, they found that we are working there as a, making barricades. So they stopped, they, they are going south, but they then turned their uh, okay. jeeps uh, yeah. to the west and fired on us. Mm. So I was just lucky. I was that time taking a break and standing on the uh, sidewalk, mm -hmm. and that's what I was. I, mm -hmm. I bullet did not hit me, mm -hmm. but arguably, we faced the first bullet of Pakistani genocide. Oh, okay. And, and then uh, I jumped. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I jumped on the ditch, then I escaped, and uh, uh, when I went to a relative's house, about a couple of hundreds years from that uh, place. Then within 10 minutes, uh, the shooting started at police station, police headquarter, then BDR headquarter, and then Hindu, we call Hindu colony, Hindu community in old Dhaka, Shakari so, Bajar. So, so this, this uh, firing continued whole night. Did As you if, see any of you, did you, any, any of your friends die? I, I'm coming to yeah, the point. Yeah. So I'm talking about the on that night. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, the, it's kind of hell, hellfire yeah, 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 yeah. all across the town, especially where I was. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, half a mile uh, BDR headquarter, mm -hmm. half a mile on uh, east uh, was the police headquarter. Shakari Bazaar was about a mile away. Mm -hmm. And when uh, uh, next morning uh, Pakistan declared curfew, mm -hmm. and so we could not get out of the house, mm -hmm. we are confined. There was no communication. Finally, we heard from BBC that and uh, uh, Akash Bani, Kolkata, that uh, Air India, that uh, hundreds of people were killed and uh, Sheikh Mujib was arrested. 
So after uh, one more day, they would draw the curfew. Then I set out uh, to take a walk around the neighborhood. So I went to Newmarket. I found the dead bodies. It's still there? Uh, uh, still there on the rickshaw pool at their body on the rickshaw. This picture is still available. Then I went to the university, uh, Dark Iqbal Hall, that time it is known, and now it's Sergeant Zawrullah Hall. I found Istiyak, Istiyak Ahmad Sisti, and a couple of my other students, their mm -hmm. dead bodies piled up in Iqbal Hall. Mm -hmm. Just that night before, I met uh, with Sisti, and he uh, used to sit in the students' movement headquarters. Mm -hmm. He informed us that uh, I, uh, the negotiation has uh, broken down, now Pakistan army will come to attack us. So I found his dead body oh after 48 goodness. hours. And he was a very strong, energetic uh, student activist. Mm -hmm. He used mm -hmm. to give slogan uh, through his lungs and, uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, Bir Bangali Ostodoro Bangladesh Shadin Koro, the heroic Bengali should take up arms oh. and, and free Bangladesh. So yes. this sort of slogan, he inspired the get together and gatherings. And then I went to uh, SM Hall and then went to the Shohid Minar, okay. symbol of uh, the Bengali language movement. Yeah. And I found that it was bulldozed uh, to, to the ground level. And then uh, I bypassed the Jagannath uh, hostel, but the, already there was mass massacre, mm -hmm. but I did not know that time. Yeah. So I turned around, my intention was to see the place where we are making barricade and we are fired up. Mm -hmm. So I went there, I found uh, the blood, mm -hmm. so clotting blood, clotting blood clots all over the uh, street. So Bod bodies have been removed. Bod body has been removed. Okay. There was no body at that, at that time. And then, then curfew, was, uh, uh, curfew was again imposed. So I had to go back to the... I'm, I'm pushing sorry for this. Uh, now, then what did you do in Tangail? And, they, you, you and they, in then it, as an activist, especially students, uh, students league's uh, me, uh, uh, member, we used to know that we have to fight to get our independence. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, in fact, we were getting training also. Mm. But after 25th March, the massacre, the genocide, what happened, we had no other uh, option but to fight back, okay. to take arms. So then I went, I left Dhaka when curfew was um, Lift. uh, lifted. I uh, went to my home village because mm -hmm. I wanted to, my mother was already passed away. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to meet my mm -hmm. father uh, and I spent few days. And then I went to, uh, I uh, tried to go to India mm -hmm. to join the liberation war. By that time we used, we heard that the, uh, the, all these you know, Bengali uh, army uh, member of the Bengali member of the armed uh, forces, police, BDR, and also student leaders, student activists, they are going to India uh, to get training and fight back. So I tried to cross the border through Jamalpur, northern not center, but I could not. There was uh, a betrayer, you know, the Rajakar. Uh, he collaborated. collaborated and informed that we, we were four people. One, my, my brother-in-law who was an uh, army uh, person and my brother and myself. So three person, I'm sorry, three person. So we had to come back. Uh, after coming back, we had to walk almost, it, took, it takes almost a week mm. because we had to cross 100 miles so why on you, foot. Why were you staying at night? Uh, so we are passing, safe places? Yes, yeah, safe yeah. places. We are passing through a very remote area. These mm. uh, uh, on foot only. Only foot only, and it was uh, in store area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know where poor people Sand live. Banks. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and um, farmers, mm -hmm. and they are very uh, poor people. So they are sympathetic mm -hmm. to our cause. So mm -hmm. we stayed with them. They fed us. Mm -hmm. So I came back, and then I decided that I have to do something. So mm -hmm. we organized a liberation forces within the country. Okay. I organized in Tangal itself. itself. In my area, I recruited about six, seven ex army people, those who deserted and came home. Mm -hmm. They did not know what to do. So I recruited them and then I recruited student activists. We formed a group and we started training. After a week, we came to know that there is a larger Freedom Fighter group under the leadership of Kadir Siddiqui. Mm -hmm. He came to 
our uh, next to our um, village. So we went there and we joined them to to, to make you know bigger mm -hmm. forces. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we started activity. Uh, we captured uh, Pakistani post. We uh, captured their arms and ammunition. And, and it's a, it's so a, where you, did you were you trained also? Did you take training in India also? Uh, uh, train, no, with our group we did not take any uh, okay. training because we had uh, local trainer. Local uh, okay. trainer. So, but uh, at one point, when Kadir Siddiqui was wounded in August, then he went to India with his group, and and some of them get an, uh, these uh, enhanced training, mm -hmm. uh, better training, and then Kadir Siddiqui came back in, in September. So uh, some of our people were trained. So, and then they trained you also. Yeah, and also my job was in the army, in the Mali Freedom Fighters, uh, group to bring arms and ammunition from India. Mm -hmm. So I went to India three times mm -hmm. in uh, April, in, uh, in May, mm -hmm. then in, in, uh, in June, and then in September. Mm -hmm. And I went three times in India. Uh, it's a very risky journey. And uh, I met Brigadier Sun Singh in, mm -hmm. uh, in Dhalu camp. That's he, in Meghalaya. Meghalaya. Meghalaya he used to bring to me mega headquarter of the Meghalaya, capital of Meghalaya, Tura, mm -hmm. where there was the headquarter of 101 Communication Zone of Indian Army. I met General Major General Gill. Okay. And he gave permission, you know. So whatever list I gave, he said, you can take arms, whatever you can. And then he, he instructed the Mankachar, a borders town in Assam, uh, BSF uh, Captain Binder Singh, Border Security Force Captain. Border Security Forces. So he used to provide the arms and ammunition, and also he recruited the boats. Oh, okay. So and then I bring those arms and ammunition uh, so by boat through Jamuna, bring to Bhuapu Tangal. Okay. And so, I made three trips. So, so were you were were you group were in direct fight with the Pakistanis or with the Rajakar, the collaborator? We, we in our area, Rajakar uh, collaborator were a few okay. because the entire district was liberated. Mm -hmm. So we used to fight with Pakistan army and okay. we, we have uh, three major operations. Okay. One was we captured and sank and burped, set fire on six Pakistani uh, steamer. They were bringing arms and ammunition to northern cantonment. Gun, gun boats. Uh, not, not, not this steamer. They are okay. carrying arms and ammunition. Okay. Of course, they are protected by gun boat. Yeah. Uh, so it was a major operation. We captured these six uh, launch, launch, launches, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it, it was filled with arms and ammunition mm -hmm. for uh, northern cantonment of Pakistani army in Rangpur. Mm -hmm. And we captured, we destroyed, we uh, recovered arms and ammunition. See, it was a huge success. This news was broadcast in BBC, Voice of America, Air Did, India. Okay. Uh, so, I'm, I'm sorry because with you we could go for 10 hours, but we're not going to. But let me ask you, did you see any atrocities by Pakistan Army? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, as I, as I told you that in August when, she, uh, when uh, Kadir Shetiki was injured, he went to uh, India. Then we decided that we will uh, ask all our we have 18,000 freedom fighters. Okay. We'll ask them to scatter and hide until Kadir Siddiqui okay. back. So one, one day I was going to, I, ha I had a lot of roles. You know, I was going to Dhaka to bring uh, the medicine for our freedom fighters. Okay. So while I was going in, 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 in Bashal, there was a Hindu uh, dominated village, affluent, and they are rich, they, they were weaver, you know. Weaver. Weavers, and then a Pakistan army came and attacked that village, and we were only half a mile away uh, from the because we had no arms and ammunition. Mm -hmm. Only me mm -hmm. and my guide, so we hide in a petty field in a, in 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 uh, um, rainy season. And there, are one kind of paddy we call amon. Yeah, they can grow in very in, tall, in, uh, very tall As in, the water, in water rises. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we took we hide, and I was. Um, hearing the screaming and crying of the women and, 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 and the men and uh, we heard that but later we have found out that Pakistan army came and they looted their money and, and their ornaments, their golds 
And these people did not go to India because they thought they are protected mm -hmm. because it's a liberated mm -hmm. zone. And they raped women, and they in front of they raped uh, daughter in front of mother, and they raped mother in front of daughter and family. Anybody killed there? Uh, yes, yeah, several people were shot dead because and also people died. They jumped into the that was rainy season because that area. All villages like island. Mm -hmm. You cannot go from one one, one house to one village to another by, uh, without boat. Yeah. So the people to say, uh, save their lives, they jumped into the river, they drowned, and okay. also Pakistani army so, killed. So, all right, I'm just about coming to an end. So, 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 what happened then? Then on 16th of December. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I was lucky that I was involved in a very significant role uh, in the Liberation War. When I went to uh, third time in India, I met Lieutenant General Aurora. He was the GOC of Eastern Command. Eastern Command, okay. And he, uh, that was third, that was in, in a, a, a end of November. Okay. And he told me that, to make a long story short, that we are going to drop one battalion paratroops in Tangai. Mm either end of November or first week of December. Mm -hmm. So you go back immediately, and in that meeting where Lieutenant General uh, Aurora, Major General Gill, Brigadier Sun Singh, Brigadier All the Pre top guys. Top guys, and I was a young man. Very young man. And only <laughs> five foot two inches, 90 yeah. pounds, <laughs> yeah. and those are all Sheikh's officer. So when I was talking to the literary, I have to look up <laughs> to the sky, you know. But I was um, honored and humbled that then General Aurora shared their secret information. He said, you are the only person know about this, that we are going to drop uh, paratroops. Your, your uh, government, your army, nobody knows. So you go back, tell your commander, and select areas where we should drop okay. these paratroops. Some areas and, and also you have to protect them. Yeah. And I'm going to send you uh, an army, a couple of army officers to work with you. So I went uh, to went back to Tangal and uh, met Kadesh Siddiqui, but it was a little bit late because our headquarters are uh, near Jamuna was the Bhuapur. Pakistan okay. came and uh, attacked that uh, area, and they burned neighboring villages, raped, uh, raped about sixty women, mm. and uh, killed children, uh, men, women. So we had to stop there, help them with money. Mm -hmm. uh, clothes, medicines. That's why I was a little bit late to reach my commander. So when I met my commander, by that time already I got a signal that one Indian Army officer already came to our area. He's waiting for me. Oh. So uh, next day, next morning, he was waiting in the in a boat in the re Jamuna River. I went and met him. He told me his name is Captain Peter, but in fact we found later he's a Bengali officer. His name is Captain Ghosh. Uh, he has wireless, uh, long distance wireless. So he and I coordinated and select with a uh, recommendation from our commander, Kadesh Siddiqui, select three places where Indian paratroops should be dropped. And on December 11, one battalion paratroops troops were dropped. But uh, on that evening in, in Calcutta, Kolkata, uh, Lieutenant General Jacob, the second in command of mm -hmm. Eastern, uh, second to yeah. uh, Aurora. Aurora. He made a press conference and told the national international press that we have dropped one bat one division paratroops around Dhaka city. It was a, just a bluff. Yeah. Okay. In fact, only 450 paratroops dropped in Tangail, which is about 110 miles further, far, further, further from Dhaka. Anyway, so that bluff worked and next morning, well, to make long story short, Brigadier Sun Singh, Brigadier Claire, Claire came with their brigade. And then by that time, General Gill, was, who was my contact, he was injured in a mine blast of Pakistani army in Sherpur, Jamalpur. In his place, General Nagra was in charge. So General Nagra, Brigadier Sun Singh, Claire came to Tangai and with uh, two columns, one to, went to Joydepur, another to Nagarwari. And it was a December uh, 16th uh, morning. And 16th morning, General Nagra sent a message to Niazi because Nagra and Niazi they were cadet uh, in the British Army. Okay. And uh, when uh, Niazi was uh, the general in Islamabad, General Nagra was a military attaché in Islamabad. Okay. So they have contact. So he addressed him. 
uh, dear Abdullah, I am here. You will be protected by uh, international uh, law. Uh, so surrender, send your people. I want to go to the cantonment and meet you. And uh, be, uh, in addition to that, General Manik saw his uh, uh, broadcasting in Air India. Uh, surrender, you are uh, uh, yeah. surrender. You are surrounded. You have no other way. We will protect you by okay. um, in, uh, international law. So finally, uh, it the message went inside. Then General Niazi sent Jamshed, General Jamshed, uh, to pick up General Lagra. Then okay. General Lagra, Kadir Siddiqui, Brigadier Sansing, Brigadier Clear went inside cantonment around 10 a.m. in the morning, sure. and, and they negotiate the instrument of surrender. And then it was. Were you in Dhaka on that day? No, uh, on that time. You were yeah, we in Tangal. Tangal, okay. myself, and uh, Anwar Shahid. No, Siddiq was with with uh, with the advance party. Okay, okay, they were there. So yeah. we because we have eighteen thousand soldiers, yeah, and yes, we, we have also to provide f uh, foods food, for this Indian army. Logistical and all. Yeah. Okay, I'm almost because running out of time. Okay, sorry. Okay, <clears throat> now I just want to ask you because we we know the story. Bangladesh had the four pillars um, uh, of its foundation. Now, what was your reaction when you saw, I'm not going to about Mujib's killing, that is of course awful, but then they start to break the pillars of, four pillars of Bangladesh constitution, the, the military generals, like, what? What was because you the guys were fighting? Yeah, for the yeah. What, what happened? Uh, the the uh, anti liberation forces, mm -hmm. so political element in East Pakistan, Jamaat Islam, Muslim League, and even Pakistan Army mm -hmm. and their supporter, mm -hmm. uh, China, United States, mm -hmm. they could not believe that Bangladesh would be liberated in nine months, mm -hmm. and uh, they were very shocked and they could not accept this defeat. Mm -hmm. So after the independence, you know, all all over the uh, world, uh, post liberation, uh, economic situation, law and order, always there is a problem. Mm -hmm. So when Bangladesh came back, he's trying to rebuild the country based on those um, those uh, principles. Yeah, he, he started building up the institutions, mm -hmm. parliament, constitution, mm -hmm. planning commission, or reorganized police and uh, uh, forces, and also fed. The refugees mm -hmm. came back, he rehabilitated them. While he was busy with this, then there was a kind of division among the freedom fighters, mm -hmm. among the army league leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, they were those army freedom fighters fought shoulder to shoulder, side by side, mm -hmm. to protect uh, each other and gain the independence. They started fighting with each other for their personal goal. Okay. And then leaders of the uh, Aum League ruling members, uh, they get, um, got involved in corruptions. So only to me, only Sheikh Mujib was on the right path. But he cannot, alone he cannot build this nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the anti-liberation forces took this advantage. Okay. While we are fighting with each other, they regrouped and they try to, with the, help, with the help of international uh, forces, Kill Sheikh Mujib and captured power, and they were anti liberation forces. Okay. So they don't care about those uh, principles. Absolutely. Now, let me just ask the very last question. Is there anything else you'd like to add? You know, I'm disappointed to see the current situation in Bangladesh, but I have, I strongly believe that people of Bangladesh, 99% people, they were peace loving, they were secular, they really believed in it. And they were not communal, mm -hmm. and they lived thousands of years side by side with other communities. Mm -hmm. So eventually, we will win. And in in all liberation war, there was a counter revolution. Mm -hmm. So we we had gone through. Now current leader Sheikh Hasina, she believes on those principles, his father's uh, uh, principles, and uh, people around him around her also believe in that. So eventually we will win. But you know, nowadays, current in, the, in this day, age and days, days and age, you see the international relation is so complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many forces are working against 
the current government against the Mundial Liberation Forces and also uh, this uh, Pakistan never accept mm -hmm. and they are still against us and other international uh, other other uh, super superpower mm -hmm. they they cannot forget so they whenever they get chance you know they take other side so uh, I'm personally optimistic that we will win Bangladesh will be a Sonar Bangla as we call mm -hmm. it Golden Bengal and Golden Bengal and uh, this uh, rise of fundamentalism and this attacking on the uh, on the minorities uh, and now they are attacking not only minorities even all the progressive yeah, forces yeah, 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 yeah. so they will be defeated <clears throat> they, they can't win but we have to go through this cycle it's unfortunate but when there will be economic growth you know these people this uh, misguided people, uh, they recruited people from low-income group and also there is forces outside the country they are feeding this uh, yeah, for religious true. fundamentalism. So I'm optimistic. Okay. It will take time but Bangladesh will be will remain as a secular democratic Bangladesh and economic development will happen and eventually it will become a Shonar Bangla. Thank you. Thank you very much.